So tell me about some of the rejuvenating herbs. And at first I questioned, I said, can you actually repair adrenal dysfunction and uh, get to the place where you don't need hydrocortisone or prescription item? Mm -hmm. And I've seen it, I've actually seen it when you know, reviewing the literature, ashwagandha, uh, dimethylglycine, trimethylglycine, methyl donors, uh, certain herbs and uh, adrenal cortex. And you, you wrote about certain things in, in kelp. And tell me about some of your favorite nutrients the ways to repair uh, the adrenals, to really get a person non-dependent on chemicals and drugs and get onto lifestyle and good quality life. Well, you know, I've, I've been dealing with this for four decades now. I know. And so when my big breakthrough started happening mm -hmm. is when I started using glandular extracts. Yes. Because they have the building blocks. See, when you've got a damaged cell, yeah. you need to repair it. And so there's been a mystique about you can't absorb any more than a single molecule across your uh, across your intestinal tract. Mm -hmm. Not true. Starting in the 1980s or so, we showed that people could absorb up to 10,000 Daltons. Uh, so that's that's quite a few amino acids across the intestinal tract intact. So they can go to those places that are damaged, like the adrenals, and then there's uh, and and act as substitutes in, so that the body will substitute in that peptide for a damaged peptide. It has this incredible wisdom. And we know this happened because in, in the 80s, there were a number of uh, st uh, Austrian studies that showed if we had, if they fed an animal heart, for example, th and they radio labeled that heart with a radioactive uh, uh, agent, Tracer. Mm -hmm. yeah, then about 80% of that ended up at the heart. If we went wow. to the uh, if a spleen, the same thing, any organ they Thymus. fed. Thymus. Yeah, any organ they fed to the animal, about 80% of it would end up within two hours at that location. Wow. So we know it goes to that location. And then we also have studies show the much more rapid repair rate of intentionally damaged animals when they were fed glandular extracts. And of course, I've got my own clinical experience that showed time after time after time when I added that glandular extract. And I decided the best one was to have the ones of the HPA axis, which is hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and then gonadal for the pH balance. And so those four, and I, I chose to have them hormone free because I'm after the building blocks to do that repair. Mm -hmm. It was much faster than I would normally, and sometimes it made possible was wasn't possible just using herbs and nutrients or lifestyle or dietary changes. Yeah. So there's a good amount of science um, back to the Greek times of, of using glandulars and uh, so forth. The thyroid, I mean, we know T3, T4, armor. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a classic way to reverse the, the symptoms. So, you know, that being said, um, Dr. Wilson, what is your website? What, what is it that you want people to, to get to be aware of? Your book's still a classic. So, again, um, tell them how they can get in touch with you. Well, the website is adrenalfatigue.org, A-D-R-E-N-A-L. F-A-T-I-G-U-E.org. And you can also go to drwilsons.com. And in the do on the adrenalfatigue.org, it has a lot of things about how to help yourself with adrenal fatigue. It has a self-grading questionnaire, the same in the book, that you can use, and it'll automatically grade it for you, so you'll know whether you're mild, moderate, or severe with adrenal fatigue. And so I want to know about that. I want them to know about that website because it's quite helpful. But I think the key message is that first of all, adrenal fatigue is real. Second of all, that you can get over it no matter how bad you feel. In most cases, recovery is not only possible, it's probable, and in some cases, people can actually, with proper therapy, get to a higher level of functioning than they were before. So in other words, a lot of people are functioning with semi uh, compromised adrenals for many years before they realize something's really wrong. Mm -hmm. And once they do the right kind of therapies, mm -hmm. they can actually get to a, a place of health that they hadn't experienced in life before. And I'll give you one example. Mm -hmm. Had a 78-year-old woman that consulted me. She said she'd had adrenal fatigue all of her life as far as she knew. Her earliest memories was at 12 years of age and she felt exactly like she had now. Yeah. We did a very simple adrenal fatigue protocol where she took uh, uh, the herbs and the nutrients described on the Adrenal Fatigue website called the Adrenal Quartet. She read my book and followed those, those, uh, uh, those, uh, those indications in the book, you know, do what the book says. And then, wouldn't you know, she had no improvement for three months. She's the longest I ever had improvement. But then, at three months, she said, 
I think I'm feeling better. At six months, she was writing her friends and saying, listen, I'm not that B word I used to be. I'm really a nice person now, and we should get together. I had adrenal fatigue all my life and didn't know it, and I'm really a nice person now. Mm -hmm. So even at 78, my oldest patient's 91. My youngest is four months. So there's this incredibly wide range of people that suffer from low adrenal function who don't know it. Sometimes they're born with weak adrenal glands. Sometimes it's toxins that make them weak. Most of the time it's lifestyle that gets to them. But the nice thing is, in almost all of these cases, it is not only treatable, but it's recoverable. And that's, that's the good news I'd like to share with the people. Well, as a naturopath and a PhD and also a chiropractor, a, a triple doctor, <laughs> you, you are certainly one who, who uh, clearly can uh, recognize various treatment modalities. And I know we've shared uh, some common ideas about uh, the whole idea of uh, adrenal fatigue and what is the best uh, intervention. Um, I've had doctors come to me and you know we've they've stayed with me for two weeks until I finally rejuvenate mm -hmm. them and really every aspect exercise sleep you know what food do they eat every hour you know what's the timing of the meals what's their mindset and putting that all together with the proper herbs and measuring their hormones and and then you know we look back and sometimes they're tough cases sometimes people have let themselves go so far mm -hmm. Are, and and they don't they're in denial too mm -hmm. their mind isn't quite clear and they don't know what to do so we've posted um, saliva tests uh, blood spot tests on our website and now um, right. uh, four-point urinary tests to measure the cortisol metabolites with mm -hmm. androgen and estrogen so that people can get the information and seek a practitioner and get some guidance and help and lifestyle intervention uh, because if we don't empower people now uh, they're gonna search from doctor to doctor and and not know what to do because we don't have enough trained doctors yet to, to know how to uh, handle this problem. That's true. I'm, I'm so glad you're doing that because there's a, there's a real need for this. Yes. There's a need for people to self-educate themselves because here's the tragedy. Medical doctors are 10 to 15 years behind the research. And the way that they're taught in medical school, because I've said on, on the initial lectures, is they're taught we're the best, we're being taught, you're being taught by the best, there's no re no need for you to look anywhere else. We're going to teach you everything you need to, to know. And it's like they've got them mesmerized to where only a few kind of escape from the fold. And so for the most part, they don't even know how blinded they are. But then we find that when people, uh, doctors anyway, when they have a few patients that don't get well or they have someone in their family doesn't get well with their drugs and medication, that's when they start seeking alternatives. And look at, for example, we have A4M here, mm -hmm. that we have 5,000 doctors a lot of times coming to these conferences. Mm -hmm. And I speak at other conferences in other continents that we have several thousand doctors there. So the word is spreading. Doctors are becoming much more educated, but that doesn't mean they, they really are keeping up in, in most cases. Right. So when you go to a doctor, you should already do research on the internet about what you think might be. And maybe you're wrong, but also it'll give you an idea about what to present to your doctor, what to ask for, key questions. And there's one other thing if they go to the doctors, because a lot of times doctors are on a five minute or eight minute schedule. Mm -hmm. When the doctor walks in a room, you keep standing and you come over and stand by the door. And the reason for that is because the doctor can't get out because you're <laughs> now between him and the door and you get a chance to ask your questions. So. <laughs>